Emily Marshawn Olanio here, and we are here to complete the Behaviors of series. Today we are speaking about the behaviors of a narcissist. Now, who am I and why should you pay attention to me, especially if this is your very first time here? So first of all, let me say welcome if this is your very first time finding me. My name is Marshawn Olanio, and I am a relationship strategist and i help christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling hurt understood and appreciated now we have a series of behaviors of and this is a topic of narcissistic behaviors as i just mentioned but we also have behaviors of liars behaviors of cheaters behaviors of blamers as well as behaviors of psychological abusers so after this one if any of the rest of them in a series attracts your attention and definitely go ahead and click the link up above where you can actually watch the series and or choose the one or two that interest you. So now let's jump into the topic today, narcissists and the behaviors of narcissistic people. Now, this can be women and men, so do not get it twisted or think that I am picking on one sex over the other, even if I concentrate more on just saying he or she. It has nothing to do with that. It is for the sake of simplicity, right? Um, so with that being said, the first thing that I want you to pay attention to when you're dealing with a narcissistic person is to understand that he or she loves to talk about number one. And the number one person in their life is themselves. No, it is not you. No, it is not their mom, their dad, even their children. It is about themselves. It is about him. It is about her, right? How great he or she is. How wonderful it is to be in their presence, right? All the stories are focused on him or her. You will get very little, if any, talk time expression time right because he or she wants all the praise they want you to gloat they want you to praise and say how great he is right how beautiful how 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 well dressed how well mannered how well versed doesn't matter what the praise is he wants it right so don't think that is something wrong with you it is something wrong with him because he wants but also believes that he deserves all the praise and actually it is a blessing for you to be in his presence so numero nuno <laughs> i messed that all up right okay numero uno himself all the time all day all night you get very little praise yourself if any as well as talk time you have no expression okay the second thing is that he or she will have very few if any long-term friendships because being in someone's presence all the time right you get a feel for who they are how they're showing up the things that they like and dislike as well as their strengths and weaknesses and for a narcissistic person if it's, everything is all about you, then you exclude everybody else. So how could you have long-term friendships and even romantic relationships? Like literally, you can add that to the list. Friendships and long-term relationships, but specifically to friendships because a lot of us have been in more than one relationship and even a long-term relationship, right? So I want you to pay attention to the friendships and even family relationships, right? Because he, um, he or she may not even have long-term family relationships because everything is about him. Like literally, he's very self-centered. He's very selfish. It's all about him. So pay attention to how many long-term friendships he actually has. The third thing I want you to pay attention to is that he constantly picks on you about all the things that you're doing wrong. Again, when you're dealing with a narcissistic person, you will not get the praise that you deserve. You won't. Because again, it's not about you. It's about him. So in order to make me feel good about myself as a narcissistic person, I now believe that I must put you down in order to make me feel good about myself as well as elevate me above you. And then one of the ways to do that is to just constantly pick on you make you feel bad um help 
with decreasing your self-esteem instead of building you up. Because again, I am the only superior one here. You get no spotlight. You get no shine here. But of course, it's not dressed up that way, right? Of course, it's not dressed up that way. The fourth thing is that he or she may think that they're right about everything. No matter how you try to correct them, no matter the things that you're, um, you know, um, trying to express, no matter how loving you are trying to be. Yeah, right about everything. Never apologizes and definitely never takes responsibility for the actions that he's doing. There's no way that's happening with a narcissistic person. Because again, I'm perfect. And literally that's how he or she sees themselves. I'm perfect. So if I'm perfect, then there's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with what I did. It's all about you, right? You're the person who's wrong in this situation. Not me, you. Everything is you. Everything's your fault. Again, blame her as well. <laughs> The fifth thing, oh, I just mentioned it, never apologizes. So sorry, so we're going to move past that one. But never apologizes about anything because he or she is always right. So why would I apologize as a narcissistic person when I think I'm right? I'm not. I'm not. It's just not happening. Number six is that he or she will throw temper tantrums when they do not get their way. Temper tantrums. Grown woman, grown man, temper tantrums. Like literally when you think about a temper tantrum, think about a toddler. You've seen a toddler because I've seen a toddler inside of a grocery store or a um, shopping mall store. They do not get their way. They want that toy. Parents said no, has said no consistently and actually has stood in their no. And all of a sudden the child is now on the floor kicking, screaming or I've actually even heard such a serious case where a child was throwing a temper tantrum and literally got undressed in the middle of the floor, butt naked. Again, they're not paying attention because they're three or four. But the point is, I didn't get my way. So in order for me to get my way, now I got to do something drastic. That is the exact same thing that your partner or spouse will do to you. Whether it's making you look bad in front of your friends, right? You're out at a, so you're, you're out at a social gathering and you're ready to go and he's not so now all of a sudden here comes this massive scene that did not need to play out that way massive scene for no reason at all but in his mind i didn't get my way of course he's not framing it that way and as sane people that's not what we see but that's how he feels because only his feelings are valid yours are not so he doesn't even see it as being bad per se this temper tantrum so you may throw temper tantrums the last thing is that he is very controlling about everything maybe it's the way that he wants you to dress maybe it's the friends that he do not want you to hang around or the friends that he does want you to hang around maybe it's the family that he's isolating you from right very controlling Right after you hang out, you must be home at a designated time. Like literally, I remember, and this was before I even realized, um, just people who control, not necessarily narcissistic people, right? People that have this controlling behavior. I was hanging out with a girlfriend, and again, this was before my whole study and relationships and everything. So we were hanging out, and I remember um, she was married at the time. I don't think I was. But anyway, she was married at the time, and... We would go out and we would go out. We would start about 10 o'clock, but her curfew was 12. Anybody who's going to the club know that the club start jumping at 12, but that was her curfew. And me being her friend, I would just leave. But I always wanted to go back and explore at X, Y, and Z. I, most of the time I probably went home. It wasn't no big deal because once I'm gone, I'm gone. I'm not going back. But it was the whole point that, yeah, you can go out, but you got to be back at 12. And it was 12 on the dot. And literally she would be like, we got to go. It's almost 12. Um, it was like no no leeway. It wasn't like 12, 1230. Or let me just text and say it was like, and I'm not knocking that to a certain degree because maybe it wasn't controlling. Maybe that was just their agreement. So that could have been in play as well. I never asked what deep, deep 
right? But I have to say in this instance to me and the way that I was looking and viewing things, it seemed as if she was being controlled because I was one of the few people that he allowed her to hang out with. Um, but that's a different story. The point is you notice when your friend is being controlled, but you have no control over what he or she is allowing in their lives. You only show up and still continue to be their friend. Right. So now if you need some help in this area, definitely go ahead and reach out to me. Sign up for your free 30 minute coaching conversation down in the comment section. Below, uh, excuse me, down in the description box below, as well as you can send me an email at Marshana at MarshawnOlanio.com. That is down there as well. I love you guys. There's nothing that you can do about it. And I thank you for sticking around for this five part series of behaviors of definitely go ahead and check out the rest of the series i love you guys and there's nothing that you can do about it and i will see you in the next video all right bye now